Hello, welcome back to Buckle Up. My name is Rob Wilson and this is the Volkswagen T-Rock. And today I'm going to find out if this is the best family crossover that you can buy. Okay, so let's start at the front as we usually do, where we can see that this is definitely leaning more into that off-roady style with its big brush guard at the bottom and its silver cladding around here. You've got a big brash grille with some interesting patterns in it, some great angles here on the bonnet. And also, these are your daytime running lights down here, which look pretty good when it's coming down the road towards you. But that's pretty much it in terms of styling at the front. So if I move on to the side, because the off-roadiness continues with some cladding around the arches, we've got some 17-inch wheels on this model. We've got black mirror caps, black roof, some nice chunky roof rails finished in silver. And then you've got this bright work coming around the top of the body shape so it's really defining that body style. Now you can get the T-Rock in a few different trim levels. This is the mid-spec style starting around £30,000. There is an entry level model called the Life which starts around £27,000 and then you can go up to an R-Line which is around £33,000. Also you can go up for the full fat T-Rock R which we have tested on the channel and that's 33, 34,000 pounds. So that's a big old step up over the R-Line model. But what we'll do now is look at the back because there are a few neat details back here as well, including these reflectors, which sort of emulate the daytime running lights that I showed you at the front. It's also worth noting that these are not the exhausts, even though they are designed to look like they are. The actual exhaust is hidden way underneath there somewhere. You've also got that continuation of the off-roady styling with this cladding going along the bottom, and you've got the T-Rock name proudly printed below the Volkswagen badge. And of course, like all Volkswagens, that badge turns into your boot release. So if I open it up and have a, oh, a sit inside, you can see that there are 445 litres of space in here, or if you fold down the rear seats, that increases to 1,290 litres. You can also move the boot floor up and down should you wish to. And there are a couple of hooks and points in here that you can use to tether things down, which is nice. But now what I think I'll do is go and sit in the back seats and see how I fit in those. Okay, here we are in the back now. And for reference, I am six foot two or 188 centimeters tall. And this seat is set up in my driver's position. So as you can see, my knees fit nicely either side of the seat, but if I want to put them inside the seat, then it would be a bit of a struggle. I probably would be kneeing the back of the driver. Headroom wise, uh, it's actually pretty decent. If I sit all the way up straight, then my head does touch. Even with this sunroof, which is an optional extra added, my, uh, the, they've sculpted the ceiling a little bit, so my head does fit into the roof pretty well, actually. In terms of practicality back here, we have some door bins which are big enough for a bottle of water and if I lower down the central armrest the water bottle fits nicely into one of two cup holders there which is great. Also worth mentioning is the fact that this can actually fold out completely into a ski hatch so if you do have skis or other longer items you can put it through this chute without affecting the two outer seats, which is a really good practical feature to have. You've also got Isofix and you've got seat back pockets on both this and the front passenger seat. In terms of stuff that you have back here, you've got some vents here. You can't control the temperature in the back, but you can control the airflow and the direction. And then you've got two USB-Cs below that as well. 
In terms of general material quality, this one's got some quite nice suede bits uh, that you sit on and then some leather surrounds and fabric. It's a mix, a blend of lots of different things, which is quite nice. There are hard plastics on the top of the doors, but where you rest your arm, this is soft. Yeah, it'd be nice if it was soft touch in the back, but really you're not going to be resting your arm up there, are you? It all feels well built anyway, so that's probably the main thing. Let's go and sit in the front and see how different it is up there. Okay, so the front of the T-Rock, I'm just going to get it straight out of the way and done with now because, hallelujah, they've kept the old VW infotainment system in this car. You don't switch to the one that's currently in the ID range of cars, which is a little bit rubbish. This one is so much better, so much easier to use. You don't have the climate controls buried within it. You can set your Apple CarPlay, Android Auto on it. Just absolutely so happy that that's there. You do have your physical climate controls in a separate bit below. Now, they aren't buttons, unfortunately, but they are at least haptic, so you can press, you know, your heated seat, and it actually does respond. You can change your fan speed with a slider, and it actually does respond. Same with the temperature ones on either side, because this obviously has climate control. You've got a couple of buttons above that for your parking sensors, your self-park button if you want to use that. And then below that you've got your storage where you can stick a mobile phone, you've got a 12 volt socket there, you've got two further USB-Cs as well. And then in terms of practicality, you've got two cup holders down here, which the bottle of water that fits in the door bins will also fit in there. I'm not sure on that front one, it looks a little bit loose. I feel like that water bottle is going to fall over, but there you go. In front of me, I've got a big screen because with this being the style variant, the mid-spec car, you get this uh, virtual cockpit stuff here in front of you. So you can configure that to have your speed, um, more important information like you, that relates to your navigation. You can, ha you can fiddle around with that yourself and figure it out what suits you best, but it's quite a nice configurable screen. You've got your steering wheel, standard Volkswagen steering wheel with your uh, adaptive cruise control and safety system buttons all on this side and then your controls for controlling that virtual screen in the middle as well. Materials in here, it's still hard plastics on the top of the doors, but these ones on the top are now soft. They weren't when the T-Rock first came out, so that is a marked improvement in terms of the quality in this vehicle. In terms of other storage, we've got a, a bin in the centre here under the armrest, and then the glove box opens up. That's quite a decent size as well. But yeah, that's generally it for the interior of the T-Rock. What I think we'll do now is take it out on some roads and go for a little drive. Okay, so driving the Volkswagen T-Rock style. First impressions are that it feels very much like a VW Group product. Uh, and if you've never been in a VW Group product before, then words that I would use to describe that feeling are uh, sensible, well-built, uh, well-screwed together, well-thought-out, um, comfortable, quiet, those sort of adjectives. The T-Rock is essentially the Golf on stilts, so it's the high-riding version of the Golf. and. Whereas the Golf used to absolutely just monster the VW sales numbers, it was always top. Guess what's overtaken it? Yep, it's this. The T-Rock is now the second best-selling car in Europe. Volkswagen Group's best-selling car in Europe by far, and massively outselling the Golf. Now, as I've mentioned, it has the more traditional interior setup, which when you're driving is a lot easier to use than the new 
screen where everything's integrated into it. You do still have your sliders and stuff, but it's a lot easier to use while you're on the move. And I think that if I was being completely honest, this is a much better setup than what you can get on the current Mark 8 Golf. I think VW would openly admit that, to be honest. So let me talk you through powertrains. You can get various different engines in the T-Rock in various different places in the world. Here in the UK, it tends to be either 1 litres or 1.5 litre engines. This one is a 1.5 four-cylinder turbocharged unit with 150 p s and 250 newton meters of torque which means it's good for a top speed of around 130 miles an hour and it'll take around eight seconds to get to 60 which is pretty good actually in terms of handling it's no it's not a sports car um i don't think anyone was thinking it would be we've already on the channel driven the t-rock in its R specification and that's obviously very different to this. This one is front wheel drive, that one's all wheel drive and that one's got more than twice the horsepower of this one. But that doesn't mean that this is significantly worse to drive. You've still got that good driving position. You sat up high enough to see over the cars in front of you. The steering is a little bit numb but I mean we're talking about a normal family crossover here we're not it's not a sporty variant like the r is we're not expecting that it handles perfectly well though sticks on in the corners well it's pretty miserable here today and it's uh, absolutely coping fine with the traction even though it's only front wheel drive as opposed to all wheel drive and of course only being front wheel drive does help with fuel economy i think you know volkswagen will claim in the 50s for mpg but on my readout today i've had around the 45 mile per gallon mark which is very respectable i think that i mean i'm not driving it as i would necessarily in the real world i'm testing it today so i will be doing some harder accelerating than i would be in normal day-to-day -day use so i think 45 miles per gallon is very respectable Gear change is pleasant enough and the clutch is nice and light, easy to use around town, as is the steering and generally the pedals are very easy to modulate. The brakes are good as well. They've got a little bit of travel and then they really bite up and help bring the car to a stop. So I'm just coming into a village now and there are speed bumps, which is excellent for testing a car. So there's one and here's the second one. Well, there you go. Um, that is very well damped. It keeps the cabin nice and costed from the things going on outside. If the speed bumps, potholes, this suspension is very good at dealing with it around town. Okay, so we're on some more twisty roads, shall we say, and it's dealing with it perfectly well. You have to remember that this is on that shared platform that basically every VW product is on and they all handle perfectly well. They're not the most exciting cars to drive, but do you really care about that in a family crossover like this? I don't think so. Obvious benefits over the Golf if you're going for one of these. For me, the screen isn't ridiculous to use you've still got some buttons down here albeit haptic for your climate controls and you've got that nice view ahead but in terms of actual space in here i'd say there's minimal difference between this and the golf mark 8 so i can see why so many people are choosing this as the alternative it's relatively similar in its footprint, but in my opinion, the technology works better and 
if you're one of those people that absolutely must have a crossover, then yeah, this is this is going to tick those boxes. In terms of comparing it with rivals such as the Kia Nero, then most of your decision, I feel like, is going to be coming down to what sort of powertrains you need, because obviously the Nero has the hybrid getup and the full EV getup as well, which this doesn't. And styling is also going to be another thing that it's going to come down to, because realistically, this is such a competitive segment that pretty much all of the cars in that class have to be of such a high standard otherwise they just stick out so much this is definitely not one of those cars that's that's sticking out for bad reasons this in terms of the current crop of crossovers at this size this should definitely be on your shopping list right well that's probably enough chattering on from me uh what i'll do now is i'll pull over and i'll do a bit of a conclusion well that's the t-rock tested do i think that this is the best family crossover well it's a very competitive segment so it is very hard to choose i think maybe some of the korean brands do things a little bit better in some areas but overall this is a very, very good car and definitely one to shortlist if you're in the market for this kind of vehicle. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, comment down below and let us know your thoughts. But most importantly, please do subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified every time we make an upload. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by becoming a channel member or buying some of our merch. But thank you again for watching and I shall see you next time. Goodbye.